Hey, in today's video of Don't Be a Wimp 101, we're going to learn how to cook potato pancakes on a hot plate. This is designed basically for people who find themselves in a small apartment and they don't have an oven. First ingredients we're going to start off with is potatoes. You want to have two cooked potatoes. This is going to make serving for two people and it can last for two days. So basically what I'm doing is I got a shredder here. Yeah, a handheld shredder. You can get one of these at the dollar store for a buck. You just shred the raw potatoes to use the skin and all. When you're living on a budget, you want to eat as healthy as you can. If you cook at home versus go to say McDonald's or you know fast food stuff, you're not only saving money in the long run, but you're saving your health. They cook a lot of their food in saturated fat, and that's why a lot of people, I think in America, have heart disease. Heart disease doesn't help your cholesterol either. So if you want to have a healthy, healthy lifestyle, you want to kind of cut that down as much as possible. And cook with things like olive oil. And you know, see, this is kind of a workout in itself. Bringing these potatoes into the pot, cooking with whole foods. And those are your best bargain for your health. So this is what the potatoes look like shredded. And for your, for these right here, your cooked ones, your cooked potatoes, sometimes the skin just falls off. When I was a kid, when I was older, and I would hear, hear some kids say, yeah, I want a peanut butter sandwich with the crust cut off. And I thought, what? The crust cut off? That's kind of a control freak thing, you know? I want a peanut butter sandwich with the crust cut off. That's spoiled brat right there. Crust cut off. My family, you ate the crust. You ate everything that you had there because, you know, you're hungry. And if you didn't eat your crust, you, you weren't going to get something different. You're going to sit there and, oh, you know, I'm hungry. <laughs> well, you should have ate your crust. <laughs> That's what we would have heard. You're hungry. I just gave you a sandwich and you threw away the crust. Good on you. You're hungry. Well, anyway, so you get your potatoes and you get the, the raw side. And what you want to do is you want to squeeze the moisture out, or as my mother-in-law used to call it, you want to squeeze the starch out. So find a place like your sink, or you know, if you don't have a sink, find a bowl or something and, and get the starch out. I'm squeezing the liquid out by putting it in my hands. See how I'm putting it in my hands? I don't have a fancy uh, tool or anything, but what I'm doing is I'm squeezing. See? Squeezing the water comes out, so I'm squeezing it into the sink. You want to squeeze the liquid out because it'll hold together better as you fry it. And you don't you want your potato pancake to hold together because it's going to be a pancake, right? The next thing you'll need are onions. So we have our onions peeled. And right here we have chives. We're going to use chives. So you take these, wash them. So we're going to cut these onions Slice these thin. Slice your, onion, your onions up. So we're on. Throw your pan here. Right here we have parsley. Now you can grow your own fresh parsley if you want. So you put your parsley in there. Stick a little rosemary in there. Rosemary has a great flavor. It smells so good too. Once you try rosemary, you're going to love it in your potato dishes if you've never had it before. Here's a little bit of dill weed. Now, dill weed makes your food kind of, it smells kind of like a pickle. Like a dill pickle? Put a little bit in there. Now, you can put anything you want in your potato pancakes. I'm not measuring anything. Got garlic powder here. You could use fresh garlic if that's what you have. That's even better than garlic powder. But if you got garlic powder, you can use that. Now we got some sage. Parsley, sage, rosemary, and thyme. That's what 
what you want to use. Parsley, sage, rosemary, and thyme. And some of you older people might listen to that and start cracking up laughing. It's actually a song. It's uh, some lyrics to a song, something about Scarborough Fair. Old hippie song. Kind of like this is kind of old hippie cooking here. So you get your olive oil or any other kind of unsaturated fat oil, stuff that doesn't clog your arteries up. You coat your pans bottom with it. Don't pour, you know, don't, don't pour too much, but save it to the side here because you might need to use it again. Now this is the product I was talking about. It's called Neat Egg. This is made out of chia seeds and garbanzo beans. This stuff is equal to, this one bag is equal to 10 eggs. So instead of, if you don't have a refrigerator and you know, you, if you don't have a refrigerator and you want eggs, you're gonna have to use your eggs up pretty quickly. You can't just, you know, leave them out too long. They do have a, an expiration to them. Use two tablespoons of water to one tablespoon of this meat egg. So we got, I got water here, we got one. Two, we want to put three eggs in, so we're going to have to use six of these waters. Three, four, five, and six, maybe a tiny bit more. All right, then you're going to use a tablespoon of the meat egg. So since we're going to make three eggs, we're going to put in three tablespoons. That's kind of a heaping tablespoon, no biggie. You don't have to be really super precise with this kind of stuff. That's what I like about the stuff that I cook. I don't have to be super precise. I just cook something that tastes good. This will help your potato pancakes stay together. So you pour it in there. And with your hands, some people want to stir it with a spoon or whatever. I'm all about putting my hands in it, you know? So I can just get it in there and stir it better. Oh, one of the most important ingredients. But you know, if you're salt sensitive, you don't have to use salt. But I got this Lowry seasoned salt stuff. I put it on top, put a generous amount. Get your potatoes, put them in your hands. Kind of make small, small patties in your hand. We got two onions in this thing. Detroit is close to my heart and they are the big three. They have, you know, General Motors, Chrysler, and uh, Ford. And they do a lot. And people depend on the auto industry. I think the best thing that you can do for Detroit is buy American cars. That's right, buy American cars. And a lot of you are like, blah, 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 you know, foreign cars are much better, they last longer, I don't care. That's part of being a wimp, right there. That's part of being a wimp. You want to buy a foreign car, total wimp. You need to buy American. And that is something I will stand by, and I mean, you can argue with me till you're blue in the face. But that will help Detroit, and Detroit needs help. But they are strong. People from Detroit are strong. If you can make it in Detroit, you can make it anywhere. Anywhere. They have a shirt now called Detroit versus everyone. I saw a lady wearing it the other day and I was like, yeah, there you go. That's a Detroit mentality. You may push us down, but we're going to get back up. And I love that about Detroit. People helping each other, the community helping each other. It's it's a big deal, and we need more of it. All right, we're going to have a second part to this Don't Be a Whip 101 while these babies cook. And after they're done, I will show them to you.